Hello there and welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, would you please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Today I'm gonna show you how to do really tiny art. And this is courtesy of Nick Stewart. I don't know if you've seen him online, but his art is from the United Kingdom and it's quite just fascinating. And I find myself reading his blog over and over and I'll put a link down below. But what he does is he uses fountain pens to create little works of art. And I don't know how big his are, but these are two inches by three inches. And it's actually a way to swatch your ink and also to see the chromatography of it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. That one was Noodler's Heart of Darkness. This is Rome Burning and Rome Burning is just the coolest ink. And so I thought I would draw the amphitheater burning down. Here's another one because I just swatched it so many times. I just thought it was super cool. And then um, this is just a chromatography of Cyan Blue by Deatramentis. And you can actually see, and that's why I wanted to do this video in the daytime, you can see the copper just kind of flow through. And I didn't do any kind of art on it, even though this kind of looks like a, I don't know, like a platypus dolphin type of a deal but didn't draw anything on that one and um, this one <clears throat> is noodler's kiowa pecan and i drew some mountains and trees and and things like that on this one and then this is noodler's diamine denim i thought that looked like a bird so i um, kind of drew some feathers in that one this is just a tiny little one and it is Diamine's Jack Frost and um, it just looked like a small little whale and so I um, drew that. And then this one is probably my favorite and it is um, a portrait of an African woman and it is Purple Mountain Majesties by Noodlers as well. So I just thought these kind of were really neat and I wanted to share these with you. Just kind of tell you what I've been doing in my spare time and um, just making these tiny little works of art that are also my my ink swatches for the inks that I use most often. So one of the favorite ones that um, artists have is of course, Diamine Earl Grey. And the reason for that is because Earl Grey has lots and lots of different um, shading in the chromatography of it. So let me, let's get started in the way that um, Nick Stewart kind of tells you to do it. And then this is, of course, my own way of doing it. What I got was a watercolor paper, and this is a 9 by 12. It's 300 GSM. And so I just took out a sheet of watercolor paper. And I know that many artists um, swear by some of the really kind of expensive type. This is actually a very cheap one, but it is fairly sturdy even for being cheap. So it's um, fairly thick and um, I, I think thicker than cardstock. But the thing of it is if it's toothy or not, and um, you can tell I've been inking, so I've got some of that um, Deatramentis ink on my hands. But um, anyway, so I'm going to do some Earl Grey. And what I did was for these, they're more uniform. It's a nine by 12, so I put that into um, small, pieces actually I did I did um three by fours and then just kind of cut them in half so that they're three inches by two inch pieces so anyway I'm going to do one today and it is um just one of my scraps and the way you start off is by actually soaking the entire um the entire paper in water and now Nick Stewart does this a different way he actually takes his paintbrush and it's just a regular paintbrush and then he puts the paint on one side I'm sorry the water on one side and then water on the other side to kind of saturate the paper but since I don't have much patience I just kind of wet the whole thing and then see how it all materializes on my on my watercolor paper so I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, zoom in here and pull back a bit and I have my Noodler's Rum Burning and my Kiowa Pecan here, but I'm gonna get those out of the way because today I'm doing the Earl Grey. And I also have my dip pen, and you can tell it's still stained purple from the Noodler's because Noodler's inks kind of do it this way. Now, you can get 
a um, Q-tip if you want to get a drop of ink. But what I do is I just kind of grab this dip pen and then just kind of place the ink wherever I think it needs to go. And really kind of decide that way what this is gonna look like. And what you want is some of that chromatography of the uh, the color of ink to come through. And so um, we'll just kind of wait and see what that looks like. So you can see the grays and in a little bit, you'll start seeing the pinks and um, all the other colors start to come out and you can see some blues. Uh, if you want to, whoopsies, yeah, try not to touch it like I just did. Um, but if you want to, you can actually put some more water in it to see what that looks like. And then have this hopefully come up with its own way that it spreads out. And so you can kind of tell what it's gonna what it's gonna be and what it's gonna do right now it's looking like a big blob it's kind of like the rorschach uh i don't know is that what it's called rorschach blots the ink blot test that you do for psychology um so i don't know if you've taken any psych courses but that's really what it reminds me of um but i kind of like the the look of the water droplets the the circular piece of it. And so, I mean, this can be like a nighttime sky or something like that. I think that's what it's looking like to me, maybe a tree in the dark. I don't know. So, um, I'm not really seeing the other colors really come out yet. Um, we can speed it along too, if you want. Let's see what happens. I, I like using paper towels also. You can see a lot of the color develops. You can even see it faster on here with the blues and the grays just starting to come out. And um, so I'm just gonna draw and let this kind of take place. How's that? So you can use your pen to start drawing into the ink, um, <clears throat> whatever you decide to kind of put in there um, and help the ink to move about a bit. Um, and it's really just, just up to you on, on what you want this to look like. And like I said, it's no rhyme or reason at all on uh, what I'm drawing, but you can kind of try to see what it looks like to you. And then hopefully it'll turn out to be that way. Um, but the neat thing is that you can help move the ink along and sometimes it behaves and sometimes it doesn't. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to make this into trees and we'll see if it looks that way or not. You can see some blue there, it's looking cool. So it's like trees and roots. And just some shadows over here. So you can move your pen along. Oh, goodness, I should have had this in more closer. There we go. 
And I started writing, but then it's too early to write. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try something else here. So I'm gonna take a piece of the paper that I did not wet. I'm gonna see if I can, I'm probably gonna ruin all of this now. You know what, it's time for experimenting and it's okay to do that in art. It's gonna, oh wow. <laughs> Okay, it just completely obliterated my my art. That's all right. Um, so you're getting an image on this side, and let me let me see. So we're gonna let it absorb a little bit on the watercolor paper. Ah, oh, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so I just kind of. There was a lot of water that I put down on the other one. So what you can see here is the roots that I was kind of drawing and a part of my tree. I'm gonna go ahead and continue on. It's just a lot less water. So I like that better. And I'm gonna absorb some more of that onto this one. And actually I'll end up with two. And that's kind of what I did with Rome Burning is I ended up with two of them. Just again, kind of taking the ink and the paper and using it to come up with some sort of a picture and a drawing that you're happy with. So um, since it's watercolor, you, watercolor paper, you can choose to keep it or not keep it. Like that first one that I made, I was like, that's just way too much water coming out and I did not like the way that was looking. So you can just take another one and draw it out. Okay, there's my trees. That's looking a lot better um, in the way that I wanted it to look kind of ghostly a little bit and dark, not so much of a black blob on the paper, but um, I wanted the roots to kind of come out and now moving some of this around. So there's my two big trees. And again, you can just kind of wipe it and tell it what you want it to do. And like I said, the, the main purpose of this is, uh, well, there's two purposes. One is to get your art to materialize. And then the second is to be able to see the chromatography of the ink. And hopefully you can see that in this. And the, the neat part is again, you can smooth it out. You can make it have the color where you want it. And I'm just using my finger. That's why my other one is stained as well <laughs> because I like to finger paint. And oh, you know what? That's what you have your napkins and paper towels here for. So here's my drawing with um, diamine Earl Grey. And I gotta show you this, look how, while I was talking, look how pretty that is and how lovely it is in the development of color. So you've got the dark diamine gray and coming into blues and also pinks and purples. And so you can actually see the color developing on that. And I don't know what that's gonna end up being, but I do really like my, my shadowy trees. And I should probably wait to write down the name, but you know, 
I can't wait. So I'm gonna write down diamine. And you can't see it again. I'm gonna move this up a bit. Oh. Oh, gray. And um, there it is. And I guess I should sign it too. I do like signing my art. Oh, and that's looking very wet still. Like everything else. Okay, so um, there it is. That's how Nick Stewart, well, this is not exactly, Nick Stewart has like way more rhyme and reason to his art, but this is really how I've kind of been playing with it and enjoying how it develops out and turns out and just taking my glass dip pen and drawing whatever um, kind of suits my fancy. And I just love that it's still wet and so you can still kind of manipulate the way all of this is looking so it looks very scribbly and kind of cool what do you think anyway just some ink drawings with the way the inks kind of look and i love the shading here and it just kind of all happens with your dip pen and a little bit of water and again if you don't want the scribbly look you can actually take um, your water brush and even kind of clean it up a bit more so just play with it and enjoy it and have a good time and i hope that this was a fun adventure into ink swatches and uh, it's much better than just throwing a blob down I think and so again I just love Nick Stewart and his art and I hope that this inspired you to do something new and something fun with your inks and one of the another tip is that I use my inks also when I'm like I do the swatches when I'm cleaning out my ink pen so that um, I'm not even wasting any of that ink. So anyway, hopefully this was a good tip for you. Enjoy playing with your inks and creating a new work of art and a tiny teeny work of art that is. All right, till next time. Bye.